Hello and welcome to the episode 182 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we will cover the stories that happened to the Beatles on the 1st of July, plus those that happened during the month, but for which we don't have a specific date. Specifically, today we'll touch upon a name change, two recording sessions and a car crash. Sometime in July 1960, the Silver Beatles changed their name into the Silver Beatles, spelled with an A. It was a hard time, since the band couldn't find new engagements after losing their drummer, Tommy Moore. Check out episode 162 and 164 of this very podcast for more information on that. In early July, their manager Alan Williams found them one, a weird gig accompanied Janice, a stripper, while she performed her show in an illegal strip club in Liverpool. Janice was supposed to bring good business to the venue, but she insisted to be backed by a live band. The gig last one week, and the four Silver Beatles obliged playing old pop standards. One must wonder if Janice was happy about their playing. From what is known, she brought over some classical sheet music, but the band quickly explained that they couldn't read any score and that they could only play pop, country and western, and rock and roll standards. Anyhow, at the end of the week, each band member had made £3.50, about £80 in 2020 money. The Silver Beatles, once again, were George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, and Stu Sutcliffe on bass. On the 1st of July 1961, instead, the Beatles performed their last engagement for the second residency at the Top Ten Club in Hamburg, West Germany. The band, with Pete Best on drums, George Harrison and John Lennon on guitar and voice, and Paul McCartney on bass and voice, performed for 92 straight nights, including this one from the beginning of their contract on the 1st of April 1961. The contract was extended twice by the club owner, Peter Eckhorn. That's 503 hours on the club stage in three months. Just like it had happened in 1960, the German visit and the demanding crowd improved the band playing a lot. The Beatles were already one of the most important bands in Liverpool before this second experience, but now they were a sensation that nobody else could match. One year later, in 1962, American rock and roll star Gene Vincent and his band, Sound Incorporated, were at the Cavern Club in Liverpool for an evening performance. The Beatles, still with Pete Bass on drums, had already met Vincent during their third Hamburg residency and were all his devoted fans, and so they were a perfect fit as supporting act. The evening was a success, as usual these days. On the 1st of July 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, were in the Studio 2 of the Abbey Road Studios to record their new single, She Loves You along with its B-side I'll Get You, presently known as Get You in the End. The session, booked from 2.30 to 5.30 pm, took instead place from 5 to 10.45 pm. With the recording date having been publicized in the music papers, there were some disturbances outside the studios, and the police had to be called twice to keep the fans at bay and to expel a girl who had managed to penetrate Studio 2 before the session could take place. The four also posed for photographs while working in the studio and before the start of the session. In late July 1963, between the 22nd and the 27th, during one of the dates at the Odeon Cinema in Whiston Super Mare, photographer Dezo Hoffman spent the day with the Beatles, taking pictures and silent 8mm color films of the lads on the beach, fooling around in Victorian swimming costumes and on go-karts somewhere nearby. On the 1st of July 1964, the Fab Four left Australia in the morning, catching a flight from Brisbane to Sydney, 
and then, from there, leaving for London. During the summer of 1965, given the public interest in the songwriting abilities of John Lennon and Paul McCartney, Granada Television proposed to Beatles manager Brian Epstein a TV special about the work of the two, a big-budget production featuring a cast of international acts singing their song, and with the Beatles topping the bill. Epstein and the Fabs liked the idea. The music of Lennon and McCartney TV special slowly started to take shape. You'll hear more about it in due course. What you will hear right now is my plea for your help. Visit www.simonmas.com support and check out the many ways in which you can show me your love and make sure I keep on producing high-quality music-related content for you all. There's quite a bit stirring beneath the surface and your help and support will be instrumental in making it happen. Right now, though, we have another trip, this time on the 1st of July 1965. The Beatles left France and flew to Madrid, Spain, on a 3.54 pm flight, ready for the next leg of their European tour. Exactly one year later, in 1966, the Beatles performed twice at the Nippon Budokan Hall in Tokyo, Japan. The first show was filmed in color by NTV. Edits from this and yesterday's performance were put together and broadcast during the second half of the Beatles recital from Nippon Budokan Tokyo, aired by NTV Channel 4 on this very evening, between 9 and 10 pm. The first part of the program featured Japanese singers Yuya Uchida and Isao Bito, plus footage of the Beatles' arrival in Japan and their press conference in Tokyo at the Hilton Hotel. Once again, the audience during the performances was quite subdued, probably for cultural reasons, or probably due to the massive presence of policemen, nearly one for every three audience members, to protect the band from any protester, including possible snipers hiding in the crowd. The rock shows at Budokan had seriously roughed some feathers, as I explained in yesterday's episode of What A Fab Day, but the Beatles mostly remained unaware of the level of threat they were facing. Two things happened two years later, in 1968. John Lennon and Yoko Ono were at the launch of their first art exhibition together, You Are Here, to Yoko from John Lennon with Love, which took place at the Robert Fraser Gallery in London. Before the opening, John and Yoko released 365 balloons filled with helium, each coming with an attached card. One side of the card was printed with the name of the exhibition, shortened in You Are Here, and the other bore the instruction, write to John Lennon, care of the Robert Fraser Gallery, 69 Duke Street, London, W1. Whoever wrote or returned the card received a badge and a short note saying, Dear friend, thank you very much for writing and sending me my balloon back. I'm sending you a badge just to remind you that you are here. Love signed by John. John was hurt when he saw that many of the returned cards contained written racist comments on Yoko. The exhibition was mainly made up of a number of charity collection boxes and a circular canvas with a minuscule You Are Here written in the center. Later in the day, the four Beatles were at the EMI studios between 5 pm and 3 am, working on Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey, overdubbing bass and John's lead vocal onto the song. During the summer of 1968, John's increasing focus on Yoko and making different art and music that couldn't be released under the Beatles' name George St. Paul's active role in shaping the releases of some Apple acts, like Mary Hopkins, J.K. Lomax and James Taylor, 
The use of Trident Studios as an alternative to the EMI Studios for some of the sessions and the preoccupations of running Apple Core's many business ventures put a heavy toll on the four. The added stress of these extra activities, so to speak, caused a lot of friction during the recording of the White Album. The Beatles, for the first time, started to feel like they were different individuals stuck with each other for working reasons, more than a cohesive group. On the 1st of July 1969, John Lennon crashed his Leyland Austin Maxi into a roadside ditch near Durness, Scotland, while on holiday with Yoko Ono, his son Julian and her daughter Kyoko. As we saw in episode 180 of this very podcast, John had decided to switch the Mini he had driven from Wales to Liverpool with the larger Maxi for the added space. John was a very bad driver who had rarely driven a vehicle after passing his exam in 1965. When he saw a car driving towards his Maxi on the narrow country road, he panicked and ended out off the road. The four passengers were brought to the Sutherland Hospital. Julian was uninjured, but in shock. He was taken by one of John's sons and returned to London by the following day. John refused to see his ex-wife Cynthia when she arrived at the hospital, demanding an explanation for taking Julian to Scotland without telling her. The other three passengers were hurt. John received 17 facial stitches, Kyoko 4 and Yoko 14. Yoko's back was also injured. The Lennons remained at the hospital for five days, partly because of Yoko's back pain and partly because she turned out to be pregnant and the doctors didn't want to take any chance with her. The stay was peaceful, and the couple managed to rest. Later, John commented, If you're going to have a car crash, try to arrange for it to happen in the Highlands. The hospital there was just great. On this same date, at the EMI Studios in London, there was the first official recording session for the Beatles, still unnamed the next album, which would later become known as Abbey Road. The session saw the return of George Martin in the producer's seat, after Paul McCartney had promised that the band would behave. In the complete Beatles recording sessions book, Martin recalls, Let it be was a miserable experience and I never thought that we would get back together again. So, I was very surprised when Paul rang me up and said, we want to make another record, Will you produce it for us? Really produce it? I said, yes, if I am really allowed to produce it. If I have to go back and accept a lot of instructions which I don't like, I won't do it. And behave they tried, although the sessions were still marred by disagreements, people not showing up on time out of spite, dramatic prima donna scenes, overdubs sometimes done by each Beatle alone in the studio, as opposed to the whole band being there, as it had happened in the good old days, and so on. But still, everything ran much better than it had for the Get Back project. Paul happened to be the only Beatle in the studio today, overdubbing a lead vocal part on You Never Give Me Your Money, between 3 and 7.30 pm. As we saw in episode 126 of What A Fab Day, the basic track had been recorded on the 6th of May at the Olympic Sound Studios. This concludes this lengthy episode. Today, I've decided to give you all, and save nothing, for the deluxe version of the podcast that I am putting together. But tomorrow… who knows what tomorrow will bring? For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.